I, I'm a little bit known for being a, a Bitcoin maximalist, but no, Ethereum is okay. But for me, I have only used fiat on Bitcoin. I do have other altcoins because people have given to them to me over time. So let's start out here. I'm just going to, if you're familiar with my uh, videos, I just have a bunch of like little sayings off and then I just expand upon them. So that's how I'm going to do this today. But let me see real quick. I didn't, okay. Tuning out the crypto noise. How to stay focused and keep your Bitcoin and what to pay attention to. That's, that's what we're going to talk about today. So who was around back in the year 2014 and 2015 in this space? Who was around? Okay, so not that many people. So what happened then? Well, in the year 2013, the price of Bitcoin, went, it spiked to over $1,000. It went from like 200 to 1000 And all sorts of people were talking about it. All sorts of people were buying it. It, it was pretty big. And then there was a, an exchange called Mt. Gox that was hacked. Let's leave it at that. And the price went down from 1000 to 800 to 700 to 600 to 500 but then back up to 600 but then from t on 2014, 2015, it was a bear market to say the least. It went down to $200 eventually. And everyone, their, everyone on their, and their mother was saying, oh, it's dead. You were a fool if you paid $700 for it. It will never go back up to $1,000. And many people were very discouraged and people sold their Bitcoin, believing all these naysayers. Now think about that for a second. Look back. Would, would you pay $1,000 for a Bitcoin now? Would you make fun of someone because they spent $1,000 on a Bitcoin? So we, we have these people out there who are Bitcoin peakers, I call them, that are always very willing just to say Bitcoin has already hit its peak. And they've been wrong every single time. You, do, you have to be a long-term thinker in this game. And so right now what we're going through is there's a lot of people saying, oh, it went up to, it'll never go back up to 20,000. Someone interviewed me the other day and said, well, now we're in a post $20,000 Bitcoin world. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. You, that implies it's never going to go up to $20,000 again. Sure, it's gone below it, but you wait around long enough, it will come back. Just to, so what I'm saying is I've experienced everything that everyone's experiencing now, but in 2014 and 2015. And so I want all of you who can, who were around back then to think back of that back then and just be reassured, you know, there are bear markets in, in whatever, in Bitcoin, in the stock market, and that's what we're going through now. But you cannot become fixated on the the supposed gurus out there. You can't be scared out of your out of your Bitcoin. And there's right now uh, there there's a lot of that going on. Um, don't be distracted by the anxiety of others. I think that kind of sums it up. Because if you are, you're going to become anxious and you're going to do something that you're going to regret in the long run. I mean, how many people from the past, I mean, they regret it very much so now that they sold their Bitcoin for $700 because they, they thought, they, they, thought they, were, they were smart for a while when it went down to 200 but when it you know, got back to 1000 when it got back to 2000 when it got back to where it is now, you know, it's hard to buy back, you know? It's more expensive to buy back now, at least. So keep that in mind. Don't think that this is a, a unique period of time uh, because they're in the mainstream media. There's all, you can, you got to be able to tune the crypto noise out. And those of you familiar with my channel have uh, heard me say that before. But another thing that I say that applies to the topic of today is personal responsibility is the new counterculture. That's what, that's what Bitcoin is about. If you sell your Bitcoin and you try to blame it on, well, the media said it was going down. No, it's your fault. You did it. You, Bitcoin is all about taking full responsibility over your finances. And you, you have to keep that in mind that you're the boss of this money. You are the boss of this money. So you can't listen to just, just make a, a rash reaction, just an impulsive move based on what someone else says. Um, you gotta be very slow and methodical about this. And again, remember that one Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. No matter what the price of the Bitcoin is in terms of fiat, 
one Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. And that should be reassuring enough because uh, you're, you're never, if the price goes down to, what, I don't know what it is now, 8,000, if it goes down to 6,000, no, you still have one Bitcoin. It's still, it, you know, we're going to have a 2020 halving in the year 20. Bitcoin, well, I'm not going to get into what the halving is, but there's a halving. You should, I hope all of you know what a, a Bitcoin halving is. If you don't, look it up on Google. It's a really important aspect of Bitcoin. Um, and it's, there's no shame in not knowing everything about Bitcoin either. And if you ever are confused, if you, you ever feel like, well, you know what, I, I am not an, I'm not an expert in this anymore, maybe I should sell it. No, do, do your own research, learn about it. Learning about it makes you more confident and uh, gets you, make, get, gives you a, a stronger hand, definitely. Um, you don't need, and speaking about that personal responsibility again, we have a lot of people that are getting into that were getting into the space at least. Now people are slowing down coming into the space, um, and they, and obviously not when the price goes down, people don't even want to go to events and people's your views go down on YouTube and everything like that. But we did we did have some people, and maybe some of them are you, who let other people manage their portfolio. That's a good way to lose your cryptocurrency. Okay, if you buy into some crypto hedge fund. Or, uh, or, or anything where you don't directly own your Bitcoin, but they've made it easier for you, you don't know if they really have even bought the Bitcoin that they say they have. You don't know how they're managing it. I know it sounds, you know, a lot of people who are used to traditional finance models are used to other people managing their finances. You know, I, I was just talking to a friend of mine who's a really smart guy. He's a businessman. He's like, yeah, I just let someone manage my entire stock portfolio. Okay, that's his business. You don't let someone do that with your Bitcoin. You do not let someone do that with your Bitcoin. I wouldn't let someone do that with my stocks either because this is, this is all about personal response. That's what Bitcoin is about, personal responsibility, managing your own private key. And that's a good way to lose your Bitcoin if you get into one of, if you have a managed portfolio or something like that. Again, you can't, and you can't get too up or down when you're listening to headlines or reading headlines. Um, in the news about Bitcoin. Here's a, a headline from uh, Doug Casey. Now, this one isn't about Bitcoin, but these are the type of headlines that you read about Bitcoin sometimes, and they make you get anxious. Prepare for the last bull market of our lifetime. Come on, dudes. Come on. If, if someone says that, they don't know for the last bull opportunity of your lifetime. This is the last. No. Don't, don't. That's to scare you off of whatever you were holding and to make you buy a newsletter or something like that. Never get too enthralled with these people who say such bold statements. Just You're, you're going down the wrong, wrong track and you're going to get a weaker hand, I would say. Um, that when the price goes down, a lot of people, especially people who paid more than the current price, they are always asking, well, why is the price going down? Why is the price going down? That they want an answer. And you know what? Sometimes there isn't a good answer. And if you start worrying about why the price is going down, you start spending a lot of your time reading nonsense, watching nonsense. It's a complete waste of your time. So my advice to you guys is don't, people say why ask why, is don't ask why. Just remember, one Bitcoin is still equal to one Bitcoin. The price is going to fluctuate. It's a new asset class, so get used to roller coasters in, in terms of price. Some days, it, you know, it's fun as anything, you know, but it all of a sudden goes to fifteen, and sixteen, and seventeen thousand dollars. But then there are other days it drops. You know, there's gonna be days where it drops two thousand dollars in the future. You just have to get that through your head, not to be scared by those days. They're going to happen, but in the long run, in the long term, it's in. It is a store of value. It's going up in value. Um, I can't make exact predictions. No, no one afterward, yes, people are going to ask me, when's it going to be $250,000? I can't answer that. And I don't know if it'll ever be $250,000. But um, as I, don't, I don't like getting people's hopes up. Because, again, I talk about not getting distracted by fear, uncertainty, and doubt. But you also can't, you can't get too high either. You can't, you can't get stuck on these people you know, there, there are certain people out there who love to make these very specific predictions. It's going to be $33,333. Seriously, the people who say things like that, because certain people love to hear the repetition of numbers too. Now, don't, don't 
fall into those traps either. You've got to just keep a, a level head about this type of thing and try to deal with people who have experience. Now, there's nothing wrong with being you know, new to the space, but if you're watching YouTube channels and the guy says he's an expert, but he's only been in the space for six months, six months isn't a long time. Now, I, again, I know this is a new space and everything, but you know, try, try to be around, try to, if you're going to you know, try to understand people's opinions or get other people's opinions, that they've been around at least one and a half years or something since before, since before this current, well, we're in a bear market now. We were in like a bull market starting around the Bitcoin halving of 2016. People who are around before the Bitcoin halving of 2016, which was the summer of 2016, try to add, you know, find people who can remember that, you know, just when the price was recovering, the OGs of, of this world. Uh, as I said, another, there's some other distractions out there, and some of you have, uh, some of you have uh, mentioned this to me even today. Um, all of the cryptocurrency mar market has gone down in terms of fiat recently. I think you, I hope you've all noticed that at least. The, the media only focuses on Bitcoin because that's the only one they know. And that should be reassuring to you if you ever think an altcoin is going to surpass Bitcoin. If you, if you travel around the world like I do, and I do travel around the, the entire world, some people think, how do I get that Litecoin version of Bitcoin? They think cryptocurrency is Bitcoin and that uh, other coins are different versions of Bitcoin. Bit all, the other, all, all the other altcoins have gone direct down in terms of fiat also. So don't think that you know, in a bear market like this, oh, well, now's the time for me to diversify into other altcoins because they're surely going to do better than Bitcoin. Now's the time for me to get into these ICOs. Sure, they're riskier. Sure, 90% of them are scams. There's been a study that said 90% of ICOs they end up nothing. They don't. Some of them don't mean to be scams, but they end up being nothing. That's that's crazy. Yet you can go up to San Francisco any month, and there are still to this very day all sorts of they call them cryptocurrency conventions, but they're mostly people trying to sell you ICOs. It's unbelievable. I mean, they're porn ICOs. There's, I mean, it's it's a wild, wacky world. That's how you lose Bitcoin, people. That is how you lose your Bitcoin. You get tempted by all these. Things that you think, oh, let me make an impulsive move. It's short term. I'm going to be able to flip it real quick and get this ICO and turn it back into Bitcoin. It's not that simple. It's not that simple. The more moves you make, the more likely you're going to make a big mistake. The more likely you're going to lose it. And I, I know this. It's not fancy. It's not glamorous. But doing nothing with your Bitcoin, it's the way to win it. It's the way to win it. I bought my Bitcoin not very recently, um, over, over a long period of time, and I do not, I just let it sit there. And it's just, it just shows you how amazing this asset class is, that in, for some of you who have owned Bitcoin um, before August of 2017, you all know that there were forks of Bitcoin, that there was one called Bcash that came out, and, you, and even if you don't like Bcash, and I don't like it, um, it, they tried to pretend to be Bitcoin. All Bitcoin holders got this crypto dividend, that's what I call it, for free. Something like that could not have been predicted in the year 2015. That just by holding Bitcoin, you would get a cryptocurrency for free that now is worth like what, 700 some dollars. I mean, as recently as you know, a year and a half ago, Bitcoin wasn't even worth that much. So I bring this up because we don't know what the future is going to bring for Bitcoin holders. What, what crazy new um, financial mechanisms are going to evolve from it, like this this forking phenomenon that we've uh, that we've witnessed, and uh, that that's why it might seem unglamorous to hold your Bitcoin now, but you never know. You never know what is going to be born from it that cannot even be predicted now because these crypto dividends they never could have been. Um, I would have never predicted such a thing um, back in the day. So yeah, discipline wins and trading loses. Not, I don't know how many of you day trade with Bitcoin. It's your business. You can do, again, personal responsibility is a new counterculture. But be ready to you know, take responsibility. Don't blame the, the, the exchange or, oh, why was this announcement made this day? It's their fault. No, you were the trader. 90% of traders lose. It is not an easy thing to do. 
even Tone Bays, the most famous uh, uh, guy who on YouTube to talk about trading, he doesn't even trade Bitcoin. He tells you how to be a good trader, but with technical analysis. But this, it's not for everyone. When you're sending money, when you're sending Bitcoin back and forth between exchanges, you can make mistakes. And I mean, I know so many. I know of plenty of people who have tried to send Bitcoin to an exchange. Oh, I sent it to a Bcash address instead. Oh, I sent my Ethereum to an Ethereum Classic address instead. That's really bad. You lose your cryptocurrency that way. That's another benefit of doing nothing. Send, you know, investing in your friend's project. You know, he might be your friend and everything, but there's no guarantees in life that he's going to be able to double your money like he says he is with your Bitcoin. It's better just to have a strong hand and hold on to it. And, you know, we have all these other temptations out there. Cloud mining. Have you guys heard about cloud mining? Run away from that type of thing. Run away from it. Seriously. That's, a, that's another good way. Most of those are scams. But most of them slowly, I mean, they play the game of making it seem, you know, giving you it in terms of fiat, making it seem, seem like you're making a fiat profit, but you're really losing Bitcoin. Again, you gotta, if you're into Bitcoin, don't care about the dollar cap. Value your wealth in Bitcoin, seriously. And if you happen to buy altcoins, by the way, don't be distracted by, like so many people are like, oh, Litecoin's gone up so much. Yeah, in terms of fiat, it has, but it's not at its all-time high in terms of its value in Bitcoin which means you would have been better just holding on to Bitcoin. So again, don't, don't, fall, into, uh, don't fall into these, these temptations of the altcoins and the ICOs. Understand what deferral of gratification means too. Just, you know, you don't, it doesn't have to be, Bitcoin doesn't have to double in value tomorrow. Put it off for a while, think long term. And if you can't, if you're, measure, try to figure out how easily distracted you are. <laughs> Okay, if you are, if seeing the price of Bitcoin like really bothers you a lot, seeing it go down, try to avoid it. Just like get into habits of like not looking at your, uh, not looking at the price of Bitcoin. Um, yes, I talked about experience mattering. Uh, pay attention. There's all these, um, there are all these gurus out there that are very flashy and again, who make those big um, predictions and who have been somewhat successful recently in terms of making good predictions, even though they're pretty new to the game. And they, they become these gurus. Never put these guys on pedestals, okay? No one is perfect. And if they're really loud about it, they're really saying, you know, I'm the greatest, I'm, you know, look at all these great predictions I made in the past. You might want to avoid these people. Try to search out people who are quiet and knowledgeable and have experience. And maybe they're just on Twitter. Um, there's some really great guys on Twitter. I actually did a video about all the, the all-stars of crypto once. And it's my personal opinion. But I've been around for a while. And I think I'm a, a good judge of character in this space. And um, just try to don't, don't get too carried away with people that are like, yeah, 250000 by the end of this year. And I've only been around since the beginning of last year. But trust me, it's two hundred fifty, And then you want to... You want to put them on, and then other people are putting them on pedestals. Don't have a Bitcoin guru. Do not have a Bitcoin guru, um, and do not get enamored with those those high predictions that are these magically high numbers. Just try to keep it keep, keep it steady. And um, here are some things I know. These are mistakes that some of you know not to make, but a lot of people don't know to make. Don't keep your Bitcoin on exchanges. Just don't do it. Get a Trezor. I think a Trezor is, I don't know what it is around now. Maybe it's around $200. It's well worth it. An insurance pol a one-time insurance policy uh, for, for $200, I mean, that's pretty good. Because these exchanges get shut down all the time. They get hacked all the time. Um, and I say this from experience, because a lot of you weren't around in 2016 when, what was it, Bitfinex got hacked. And now people, you know, people think Bitfinex is so trustworthy. How could that even happen? Well, it did happen. And there are some exchanges that don't even exist anymore um, that were once really big exchanges. So if you are keeping your Bitcoin on an exchange right now, um, one of the first things you should do when you get home is just, just order a Trezor. Just get it over with and just you know rip off the Band-Aid, whatever, whatever they say. That is a great way to lose your Bitcoin if you have it on a third party. 